Hi everyone, welcome to my talk today, tips to help you prepare for a band six, seven nursing interview. This, the principles in this talk would be relevant to any type of role. It could be a research role, it could be a clinical community setting, um, it could be management type role, it could be a specialist nurse, advanced nurse practitioner or clinical governance role. So um, do check out my YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. There's a lot more videos and there is also a talk on how to prepare a personal statement for a band six, seven um, nursing role as well. And also my book, How to Prepare for Interviews and Develop Your Career as a Nurse or Midwife has lots of tips in too. So I hope you enjoy the session. So I'm going to cover what background research you need to do before interview, what to expect during your interview, how to prepare for your interview, planning interview questions, and um, I will give some generic type questions that you might be asked, and dealing with nerves. Learning from interview feedback is also really important. So firstly, when you get that email to say that you've been shortlisted, um, you will have um, it will indicate what type of interview you're going to have and what format it will take. So it could be an interview panel, it could be um, a value based interview, it could be that you need to do a short presentation or have some scenario based questions. So always check what is being expected on the day. And if you do have a presentation, I have, because I know some people won't have done teaching courses, for example, and I have some really good tips on a talk, how to prepare a presentation for a band six or seven nursing interview. So do check that out. So the first thing to do is your background research for the role. So what does the role and the specialist field actually entail? It might be that you work in that area, you've worked there for 10 years and you've been able to observe and shadow that band six or band seven, but you may not have full insight into the role. So it's really helpful to book, to meet that person that's currently in the role or to the team that you're going to be working with. But it's essential really to do that if it's an area that you've not worked in before. So book an informal visit or you might do an online meeting with them currently with the pandemic. Um, review the job description and personal specification to look at the key headings that are coming out on that job description, such as leadership, collaboration, managing leading teams. It could be linked to an education, quality standards, really depends on the role. But the job description will really indicate um, the line of questioning that you're going to have because they're going to be questioning to see if you can do that role in the interview. Employer intranet is really important. Research the specialist field to so go and look at some key articles in the area and journals and national standards. And as I said, talk to experienced staff and try and book meetings as soon as possible because they may be inundated with lots of applicants and managers are very busy and leaders are very busy. And employer NHS values, have a look at the NHS values and the local internet will have the values for that um, hospital trust or employer, for example, and they may ask questions on, on that. Part of your background research should also be to review key healthcare terms and definitions that relate to that role. So by looking at the job description, if you see the term transfer, um, transformational leadership or um, audit or evidence based practice or clinical governance, risk assessment, what is the difference between those terms? And I have I've done many, many interviews over the years and I have seen people that know what they mean, but you can go completely blank in an interview. So it's just revising what those key terms mean to you and how you may demonstrate those key terms. Um, in my book, um, How to Prepare for Interviews, I have tables that have all the key terms in there and real simple definitions so they can really help you prepare for an interview. Um, so looking at leadership, 
healthcare, it might be health education and promotion. It very much depends on what role you're going for. So revising those terms will help you if you're asked a question and the they, they mention the term audit that you know what they mean by that term. Local and national systems and standards of care. So when you progress up to um, band six, seven type roles, you will be adhering to national standards, key performance indicators, quality standards or risk assessments. So knowing about the standards that relate to the role that you're applying for is very important because often you'll be asked some type of question linked to um, implementing, adhering to, promoting those standards. Roles and responsibilities of what are your roles and responsibilities and um, what is your role regarding team management and supporting teams? So you need to understand the roles that the people in your team, if you are leading um, a team, for example, and if you're unsure, then ask or send an email for clarification. And, it, and don't forget, you might have unregistered nurses. So what I've seen with some um, in some interviews, when you ask a question about leading a team, they often, um, the nurses, not often, but some nurses will focus on registered nurses. Well, a team, if you're looking at managing and leading teams, isn't usually just a registered nurse. You've got a wide range of roles nowadays. I have got a video on the different types of roles from unregistered up to registered nurse. If you're not sure what an assistant practitioner or a nursing associate does and the sort of certificates and, and education of those roles. So it's, that's quite a good um, talk to look at. But understanding roles, you might have um, advanced healthcare practitioner roles that you link to as well that you're responsible for, administration roles um, um, and clerical roles. Current hot topics is another bit of background research to do. So review current topical issues in your field or profession. Sometimes you're asked about those topics across media and professional journals. And at the moment, key topics are obviously COVID and staff wellbeing. Um, and you may be asked to discuss any contemporary practice related subject in that area. Reflect on the key differences between your current role and the new role. They're looking to see that you can meet the requirements of this role and they might ask you what the differences are relating to management and leadership responsibilities. So doing the background reading and research that I mentioned earlier will help you inform that question. They might ask it in a different way, but they will often be asking you relating to the different aspects of the role that you're applying for. The question will relate to that. What are you expected to deliver in that role? And that is one of the key things you need to research and be able to answer and as part of that service and the skills that are required to do to deliver that aspect of the role. Are you responsible for a budget, for staffing establishments or delivering teaching modules, for example? And if you're asked a question relating to delivering teaching, how are you going to answer it? Um, how are you going to answer about shortness of staff if there's if there's um, a shortness of staff in the team and how you lead that? Um, it, you're going to be asked questions relating what if questions, what would you do if they're going to relate to the role? So this will help you very much doing this background research will help you. Different types of interviews, you might have a face to face or an online virtual interview. Um, if you do have an online virtual interview, do make sure there's no children in the vicinity um, and that you have you're in a quiet room where possible. And it, it, you might um, have to check your IT beforehand as well to make sure that you're on time and that it works. If it doesn't go and book a room in the library, you can go to healthcare libraries now and book rooms um, or university libraries or um, book a room in your local institution. It's a couple of hours long. Is it that you're going to do some scenarios, that you're going to be do some table talks where you're going to go around and have different people asking you different questions about different scenarios? Is it a 30 minute long face to face panel interview? Um, so is there scenario based exercises or a presentation? 
And I do know people that have turned up to interview that didn't read the email, just saw the face to face interview and didn't prepare for any scenario based questions, for example. Um, be punctual. Always check the location, travel or the Internet links. If it's a virtual interview, make sure that you can see your face, that there's good reception, that your camera's still. Do not do it on a phone. If you're going to do it on a phone, you need to make sure it's um, static so that it's not moving around and that you're not having to hold the phone and that there's no disturbances while the mobile's on. But ideally, it's on a desktop. Value based interviews aim to select individuals who align most closely with the values of that organisation or the NHS. So that's why one of the background preparation bits I said earlier was to go and look at those values. So some generic questions might be in a value based interview. They start with a generic question. It might be give me an example where you've led a positive change in practice. So. Um, that will then be followed by probing or drilling down so there'll be more questions so you need to have a really good example where you've influenced some change in practice or had a positive impact in practice you mentioned that this change so a drilling down question might be you mentioned that this change had an impact on patient care how do you know it had an impact how did you evaluate the impact? So these are examples of, of further questioning that the interviewer does so they, with a value based interview. That's the sort of structure. Um, with the value based interview, interviewers expect a relevant example that demonstrates your understanding of practical application. And it's not about what you've observed others doing. It's to do with your demonstration of that skill or knowledge or experiences. So without specific detail, your answer will be rated as low. So you, if you've got a value based interview, you need to prepare um, and highlight really good examples that show practical application for leadership, collaboration, team working, quality, standards, teaching, supporting others, um, dealing with the challenging situation. Um, anything that aligns to the job description, they're the sort of key areas really of a band six, seven role. You know, you're dealing with challenges, um, you're leading, you're collaborating with others. You might be educating. It depends on the type of role, improving standards. But if it is a VBI value based interview, um, you'll be asked a generic question that will relate to some aspect of that job description. So spend time choosing and reflecting on your best examples and achievement before the interview and you stand a much higher chance of having being rated high rather than plucking an example and then you're going to be drilling down. They, they will start drilling down if you've prepared it beforehand, a few different scenarios and examples, it will really help you. What to expect during your interview? So you're going to have one lead interviewer who should chair and manage the time throughout. There will always be more than one interviewer to prevent bias. And I would question it if there wasn't. Interviewers will make notes when you answer questions. Um, they might be quite straight faced and, and look quite, you know, not very smiley sometimes. Don't worry, they're concentrating on writing or typing while you're talking. And um, it doesn't mean that they don't think you're right for the role. So don't let that put you off. Um, and when you're delivering a presentation, they will be writing notes and you should spend as much time preparing. Um, well, maybe not as much time, but um, a lot of time preparing for presentations. It shouldn't be an afterthought to prepare a presentation because it could be the difference between people um, getting the job because you may be rated very similarly. It's you may have similar experience, knowledge, skills done both really. Two people might have done really well in an interview and it's the presentation that has set you apart from the other candidates. So do take time with your presentations. And as I said, I have a talk out on how to prepare for a presentations. They usually are marked with a scoring and an assessment scale as well. So what do the interviewers want to know? And what are some sort of generic questions? They want to know that you understand what you have applied for. And that question can be asked in so many different ways. Um, 
you know, they might just start with tell me a bit about yourself and why you've applied for the role. And you do want to think about how you're going to structure that your answer beforehand. You don't need to learn it off by rote, but you don't just want to say, oh, I've always had an interest in this area um, and it's my ideal role. You need to be thinking about what is it specifically about the specialist field and you're marketing yourself. So you might um, talk about, you know, the length of the amount of experience that you've got, the courses that you've done that shows your passion for the area. This is your ideal role. You're wanting to get across, you know, the, your enthusiasm for that role. Um, but they might ask, how is the role different to your current role? And you can't answer that question without having insight. So all of that background reading I mentioned earlier is going to help you with any sort of question linked to understanding of the role. Will you be able to manage the additional responsibility? How are you going to achieve a healthy work life balance? So you need insight into that role to be able to answer these questions. They want to know that you've got the knowledge and skills to do the role. So do you hold the right values and skills and knowledge? Do you have the potential and willingness to develop skills in the future if needed? So if you haven't got one aspect of the desirable and there's a key course that links to the role when you've looked at the personal specification, you can say that. You can say that I, you know, I'm planning on um, applying for this leadership course um, to develop my leadership skills. Do you communicate and collaborative, collaborate positively with others and in teams? Can you cope with future challenges? So they're trying to probe to see if you can, you've got the skills to be able to manage people and to positively um, collaborate and bring teams together to build it. Be all different types of questions, but these sort of questions are really probing to see that you've got the knowledge and skills. So if you've prepped some key examples linked to those transferable skills, as I said earlier, that's going to help you answer that question. So the third thing, they want to know that you're the best candidate for the role. So questions are going to be asked to differentiate you um, from other candidates and they're usually your what if questions. What would you do if this happened? How would you lead this? How would you manage this situation? And they will link to the job description, the key transferable skills. You might bring in, well, I, I um, in the past I had something similar I had to deal with. Um, so doing your preparation will help you. Talking to people um, in informal visits or experienced nurses in the role about their challenges will help as well inform questions. So if um, you talk to clinical managers and leaders about challenges, it might be to do with staffing. So you might be asked, what would you do if this happened with staffing? What would you do if there was an issue between two members of staff in the team to promote team working? So talking to people about their challenges will help you with these sort of with this um, aspect of the interview. So preparing practical examples, think about leadership and management, improving quality, evidence based practice and research, teaching, training, supporting and supervising others, patient education, health education, promotion. It could be digital work you're doing, could be clinical ac academic project work. Um, external consultancy, volunteer, charitable work. And if you can think about some examples that would link to some of these areas, I'm not saying all of these areas will link to your specific job description, but they may do. If they're highlighted in a job description, then you definitely should be looking at trying to highlight a good example um, from current or past experience. And as I said, my video on five ways to influence nursing practice has some really good broad range of examples that you may use here. Also in my book, um, How to Prepare for um, Interviews and Develop Your Career as a Nurse or Midwife, I have a whole section on different types of questions that would link to different areas here as well. So just a few example generic questions, understanding the role field service. Why have you applied for this band six, seven role? What led you to apply for a role in this specialist area? Tell me what you know about this ward community service setting. Talk about the patients that you'll be caring for. 
it might ask different questions about the types of um, condition. If you have a medic on the um, panel, they may come out with a question linked to a, a patient's condition if you're going for advanced nurse practitioner role or an aspects of care. The team that you're going to be leading, education programmes, the service you're going to deliver, deliver. What do you think you will need the most support with if you're offered this role? Now, you can't answer that question without knowing what the role entails. And if it's to do with leadership, you could say, well, I've um, never led a team before, but I've led this project and I'm starting to take on aspects of the role. Um, in my role as a five, I'm looking at leading the support of students when we welcome them to the area. You're sort of um, if there is if you highlighting where you need support, you can sort of highlight where you're trying to develop those skills, but that you would hope to um, gain support from the leadership team currently. So how you are going to um, meet your needs there, thinking about that. So if you need this area of support and this is how I'm going to access the support is what I'm trying to say. So um, that you say that in the interview that although I might need this support, this is where I will access the support the support and this is where I've been developing my skills in the area would be the ideal answer. So knowledge and skills to do the role, so what transferable skills do you hold that link to this role? Please could you give us an example where you have and it could be led, managed, coordinated, collaborated, um, provide, um, it could be to do with health promotion, delivery, whatever aspect of the role but an example explain how this impacted on patients or staff, how it was evaluated and the amount of staff that when somebody says in an interview, how did you evaluate it? They freeze and it's it's just getting feedback from staff or patients or it, it could be a formal data collection. But if you it, otherwise it's audits, incident reports, this how, how do we know we pro provide quality care is through feedback from patients and staff. If you think about patients, we usually have friends and family surveys. Um, we talk to them. You might have specific feedback in your local area that that's already used. When you do informal visits, that's where you can ask, where do you get feedback? How do you evaluate your service? That's a key question to ask when you're preparing for interviews and you're talking to experienced staff. Because you, you often will be, that will set candidates apart at interview that they've actually thought about the impact and how care is evaluated or staff experiences are evaluated. Can you give me an example where you have led a team, influenced change, promoted or delivered whatever aspect of um, the role? So coming near to the end now, dealing with nerves and it can be so nerve wracking going for an interview um, and everybody feels nervous. I was so nervous going for every single role I went for and I had to go for three, I think, roles before I got a um, sister's role three interviews, sorry, before I got a sister's role. And I was so nervous, but at every interview I learned, I got feedback from the interviewers and tried to develop my interview skills. So it's normal. Um, interviewers expect it, and it's the same at whatever level of nurse you go for. If you're really excessively nervous, let the interviewer know and they can support you. They might get you a glass of water. Remember, you've done really well securing an interview and they're human. Interviewers want you to do well and to get the most out of you. So if you need to take a break, just ask for a little more time. You're not quite sure how to ask answer a question. Just say that in the interview. A key tip, the more you prepare for the interview, the more confident you will feel. So you might want to use mnemonics or memory aids in case you go blank. And um, I'll be doing a talk um, in the future with a colleague about using mnemonics in interviews, which might help. Um, so um, I tend to use the nursing process. So if I went blank in an interview, I would say, well, I'm going to assess. How do I assess? So I'd assess and try and think systematically. Um, I'd assess how to gain information, what to do in the situation. I'd plan what I'm going to do. I'd implement it and then I'd deliver and um, evaluate. 
So just thinking systematically, if it was a scenario based question, it was an acute incident, um, if it was related to physical care, you could use A, B, C, D, E. Um, but there's lots of different interview mnemonics out there. And as I said, I'll be doing a talk on that. Just do your best. Put your interview in context. You can apply again. Um, life isn't just about work. It's about, you know, family, friends and your health. So just try to put it in context. You can always apply again later or go for another role elsewhere. What if you're not offered the role? That's a possibility. If you're not offered the role, make sure that you request verbal feedback from an interviewer. Then employers are not necessarily obliged to offer written feedback. Some do, but um, most don't. And ask the interviewer some specific feedback questions. Now, you could be so disappointed that you just put the phone down and have a cry and you're really upset. But afterwards, reflecting, go back to that interviewer and say, look, I'd really like to learn from my interview. Could you give me some tips in the future? Um, if you can, when they phone and they, if they say, unfortunately, you weren't offered, try and ask, could, how could I have improved my answers? What was my strongest, weakest answer? Because that information is so helpful for you if you go for a future interview, which you, you're, you know, and you don't have to, if, if another post doesn't come up in your area, you can go elsewhere. You've got transferable skills, as I mentioned earlier, and this will really help your professional development. What if I'm not offered the role? Another um, tip is don't spend time and energy dwelling on what ifs. Uh, reflect on your interview feedback to inform your future preparation. Write the interview questions down. That's something you can do and um, feedback because you'll forget for future interviews and book a mock interview. I've done I do lots of mock interviews as a recruitment and retention lead. As long as I'm not on the panel, you can ask um, managers in your area. You can ask educators, somebody completely different out of the area. But um, there's nothing stopping you having mock interviews, what, um, apart from the fact people might be busy. So you need to give people notice. But if you want to try and set up a mock interview, um, that's fantastic preparation for your for your interview and shows, you know, really good that you're being proactive. So the key tips to success, aligning your past experiences to the job and your current experiences, allowing time to prepare for your interview, never presume the job is yours, ask for interview feedback if you're not offered the role and it's preparation that um, is key to success at interviews. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the YouTube channel or DM me on Twitter or Instagram or on my website. And I wish you every success in your future careers and with your interview. So good luck.